Take your CJ7 all the way to 11. Jeepers with cool guys. Now that we got the timing chain cover off, and we've actually taken off the timing chain um, and the wheels, wanted to backtrack because I unfortunately didn't film that. Apologize. So you have your spindle, or your crankshaft um, spindle, and then you've also got your sprocket. I love it. They call this a sprocket. How cool is that? Um, and there's two... This fits, obviously, onto your main camshaft um, only one way. There's two points on this. So on your, your actual um, crankshaft sprocket, there's a round circle. Go ahead and mark that. And then on your camshaft sprocket, mark the one pointer. There's only one. All the other ones are just knobs. Um, you want to rotate your crankshaft to where these two line up exactly. Then you take off the bolt. That easily comes out. And then you might have to take a puller to pull this off, but it comes off pretty easily. Drop that off, and then your timing, timing chain comes off. Maybe a little overkill, but I just brushed them up and got all the oil off of it. I mean, they're going underneath the timing cover, but they definitely look a lot better. So, yay! I want to give you a real quick, super close-up view of this. So you can see how there's these um, channels, or the channel on the, the actual um, gear goes right into there. So there's no way of misaligning it. And then on the outside of this is a, uh, a steel ring called the oil slinger. That just slides right off. According to the manual, this is a new typing chain that I got. Um, it's got a lot more uh, connections on it as far as like these actual bands. It's only supposed to have 48 links to it, so make sure, or 48 pins, so make sure that you check that before you actually stick it on there because otherwise you're going to be defeating the purpose of all this. So the way that this works is you want to line up your main, your camshaft gear and then your timing spindle, or your uh, crankshaft spindle, very much like we had it before. So this might take a little bit of configuration, but you want to make sure you get those two things lined up so when you put it back on, you are right on the money. And then this just simply slides right back into place. This is supposed to. Obviously, be careful when you're doing this because if you don't have it aligned right and you're pounding on this thing, you're going to push it right through the wrong places. So just hopefully lightly tap this thing on. All right, so after a little bit of finagling, um, worked out great. Put a little bit of engine oil on the, the pins here and on this just to make it slide a little bit easier. But we're on. These things are lined up. Now, what you want to do, apparently, is you want to rotate the crankcase uh, timing indicator to about 3 o'clock. And once you get that to 3 o'clock, uh, then this should be about 12.30, give or take. You should be able to count the um, pins between this dot and this indicator and there should be 15 so I'm going to do that just to make sure I've got it right so how do I do that? well pretty simple um, take your harmonic balancer main nut with the washer screw this sucker all the way in and then use this as your rotation um, component or if you have the bell housing off you can use the, uh, the flywheel as that option too but I've already put that stuff back on there and this is really the only way for me to rotate the crankcase. Alright, so once I get to this point, I want to rotate this indicator, um, our highlighted one, to 1 o'clock. Alright, so we're at about 12.30. Go a little bit further. 
where this is lined up at three, about three o'clock. Yeah, that's about right. There we go. Um, actually, a good w way of looking through it is you want to almost, there's a uh, socket screw on the uh, engine port right through here. So you want to line that up with this hole here with the indicator, and you're pretty much going to be right on. So you're almost at three o'clock. Yeah, if you're almost lined up perfectly. So that's at least some kind of an indicator. So I'm going to count the pins between this and that. So I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Perfect. So in between this indicator and this indicator, we've got 15. We're right on. Okay, now that we've got that all on um, and we've got the rotated, we've got the things counted. This is so much better. There's a little bit of slack here, but I guess that that's kind of the way it's supposed to be. The one that I had on, I mean, this thing was hanging down. This thing was all the way in here. Obviously stretched out, seriously need to be uh, replaced. Um, your sprocket, uh, love that word, sprocket. It's sprockets. Um, nut needs to be tightened to 40 foot pounds, or uh, 50 foot pounds, actually. All right, take a screwdriver. Find one of the um, ridges on the inside of your engine block and wedge your uh, screwdriver through it so that you can provide yourself enough. There you go, 50 pounds. Perfect. Cool, got that one on. Oh, cool guy, what do I do about this one? Well. This is going to be kind of a pain in the butt because we've got this thing on here pretty tight. Real easy to do. Just take it, your uh, take your socket wrench and put it on the loosening mode and just pop it. There you go. Kind of like an impact wrench a little bit. This is that oil slinger I was telling you about. Um, I've already treated this and cleaned it up, but it just slides right on there and it just sits in that little area. Easy to go. Doesn't really have to go anywhere. I believe what it does is it actually backs up into the back of the timing case cover um, and helps provide a kind of a partial seal to the back of this and to help out your actual oil or your crankcase seal. That has also been replaced. Next, let's put on our gasket. Need to put RTV on it, both sides, and then stick it on there. And I've seen plenty of people just go hog wild on this stuff. I don't think you really want to do that because you don't want to get it into the actual threads. So all I did was just put a nice little layer on the inside. I don't know why you go around the outside of the gasket because if it gets to that point, it's already too late. So put a nice film on there, smooth it out, and slide it in here without getting it all over everything. Press it into place. Right now that I've got it cleaned up, I gotta do the exact same on this. So I'm gonna just run a RTV line around the inside. Might actually get a brush out, paintbrush, and just kind of put it on there. It'd be a little bit easier. Got it all greased up. No, RTV. I also put a little bit on here. Okay, something to note there. Take off your water pump pulley, because otherwise you can't get the timing case over the top of it. That would not have been good. Also get your timing case cover in the right position before you decide to put it on. And then apply your bolts. Okay, so once you've got yourself organized and you actually have your bolts ready to go, then put it on and then screw in a couple of them and we'll just hold it in place. Well folks, there you have it. Crankcase all installed. I think I got these bolts in the right place. Um, these are all three quarter inch, I think, um, length, uh, one quarter uh, width bolts. This one I think is an inch, inch and a half, and this one's two inches because it has to go all the way back into the actual um, block. These two are the mounting posts for the alternator. I think I've got these in the right place. We'll see. Point is, is that 
These only get torqued down, these smaller ones only get torqued down to five foot pounds. I mean, that is light. These only are at 16. So that's kind of crazy to me. Um, so that's really light. You can basically hand tighten those things and you're good to go. Last but not least, we're going to put on the harmonic balancer. Here's the complication with this. Um, I've checked just about every one that's out there, and every single one of them, all of the newer ones, all have these bolts, or these screw lines, these screw areas, um, like a sixteenth of an inch closer to the center point of this. So that means that your pulley, you're going to actually have to grind out a little bit of space so that you can actually fit your pulley over this, over the screws. Um, I, there's no other way around it. It's just annoying. So if you have to replace your harmonic balancer, get ready to do that. You'll see it on almost every one of the reviews, at least for the CJs. Maybe for the YJs it's better. I don't really know. Maybe this thing was designed for a YJ. Couldn't tell you. But for the ones for the CJs, you're going to have to do that with your pulley. This is as simple as once you get your oil seal in here and seated, then you actually just take your harmonic balancer. And I found that these are actually not grooves. Um, these are actually keys. They're, there's a slot ground into the actual crankcase that these kind of half moons um, slots of metal fit into. Didn't take them out, didn't need to. So they're actually called keys. Let's get that lined up. Nice and simple. At least I think it's nice and simple. And then at that point, well, actually you want to uh, put some motor oil on the inside of this thing so it slides easier. And then you just tap this into place and it will fit right on the inside of your oil seal.